In today's video, we're going to continue to track the upcoming severe weather events as well as potential tornado outbreaks and kind of the locations where we expect that type of activity. Rest assured, we will go over all the upcoming storms across the United States as well as the temperature pattern. Let's dive into things and take a look at later on this afternoon because we actually do have a bit of severe weather expected for today. Uh, even upwards of an enhanced risk here in this deeper south kind of Dixie Alley area that we've been talking about for probably over a week now. Uh, we do have this 1004 millibar low pressure center up here in Missouri, bringing some showery activity, perhaps some thunderstorms up here to the Midwest. And this is really the work, uh, the workhorse behind all of this severe weather activity is that low over top is really creating a lot of the instability and precipitation overall. We also have a pretty decent push here from Gulf Moisture, bringing in uh, the very moist and just overall good environment for severe weather to occur. By the time we reach tomorrow on Tuesday, May 14th, we see that a lot of the potential severe weather is up and down the southeast coast here. But I would say in particular, the main area to watch is going to be uh, right around here for portions of Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. Uh, although possibilities for severe weather and thunderstorms is going to be pretty much anywhere underneath this low and to the east of it, I would say. We do have activity over the Rockies here, uh, ongoing and basically getting restarted. And this could be our next line of severe weather that's going to move through these areas again. So we're going to have to watch that very closely as well. By Wednesday, what we see is that a low is taking place near North Carolina. We have uh, some strong precipitation nearby it. Likely more showery than thunderstorms, especially with this low being to the south of this activity. That's not exactly the best signal that we've ever seen for severe weather, uh, if I had to say. Uh, we do see a 999 over western Texas, and this could, again, be our next severe weather event. Again, that's a pretty far south low, so we'll have to see if precipitation forms underneath it. And that low pretty much dissipates. I would say that it'll, somewhere in here is where a low is likely to form. We do have precipitation underneath here, so I'd say more severe weather possible on Thursday for especially these areas in here. So Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, possible, not exactly a sure thing yet, of course. We do have 1,005 up here in Wisconsin, so potential for some severe weather along that area as well. And we still have showers ongoing as a result of this 1,002 offshore of the East Coast. So if you take it from the plains eastward, plenty of activity around for the day on Thursday the 16th. Friday the 17th, we have thunderstorms pretty present throughout this deeper south area, Texas, Oklahoma, eastward, through to the mid-Atlantic and through the southeast. We're having tons of activity. So again, the same area that we've really been eyeballing for over a week now. We also have plenty of activity further north as well for the upper Midwest, portions of the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic as well. Definitely seeing plenty of thunderstorm activity there on Friday the 17th. Saturday the 18th here, we still see the deeper south is kind of the highlight here of the potential severe weather and thunderstorms from Oklahoma and Texas eastward through these areas. Uh, again, we see a lot of thunderstorm activity ongoing, some potential for the mid-Atlantic and northeast as well there. Uh, by the time we reach Sunday on the 19th, we see a little bit more organized look here across the deeper south with still strong thunderstorms from the southern Ohio Valley and southern Midwest areas down through the deeper south. We're seeing plenty of thunderstorm activity and therefore chances of severe weather for Sunday on the 19th. Uh, Monday here on the 20th, we do actually have a low 999 over Michigan, dragging cold front perhaps. But we also see this push of warmth and humidity bringing about some thunderstorms here to the southeast. And I think that this does have a good chance to bring severe weather pretty much in all of these areas. So could be a little bit more of a, a wider spread day there on Monday the 20th, although it is very, very far out at this point. We do have a 990 up there in Canada by Tuesday the 21st, so that low is intensifying, and we have a strong cold front dragging here. This could be a kind of uh, eastern special as we see areas from New York southward through Georgia, so basically all of the Appalachian Mountain area. Seeing this cold front could feature some pretty strong thunderstorms around there. We also have a 995 taking off for the plains by this point, and this could bring about our next line of severe weather, because look at this, by that evening, Tuesday into Wednesday, we have strong thunderstorms flaring up for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri there. Could bring about plenty of severe weather for those areas. And then as we reach towards Wednesday, we see it is still pretty widespread uh, with this wide stretching co cold front there, all the way from Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, up through 
uh, Illinois, I, uh, Iowa there, Wisconsin, and Minnesota as well, and up into Canada also. So some pretty strong thunderstorms probably along that line. And look, this is the end of the model run, but plenty to work with here, it seems like, for more severe weather activity. As a bonus, we're going to dive into your European AIFS model, and this is the Euro European model, but with AI. And this one's actually going to get us further. Instead of only getting to 240 hours, we're actually going to get to see 360 hours here. So let's see where we get agreement. We're just going to kind of count down some of these severe weather events. And for day one, we obviously have severe weather ongoing throughout the deeper south central and southeastern states. Tomorrow spreading into the southeast. And by the time we're reaching Thursday, we already have our next line of activity according to this model. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri there. And watch it spread eastward from uh, Thursday overnight into Friday. This is about 2 a.m. on Friday the 17th. Looks like some strong precipitation being picked up between eastern Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and into Mississippi and Alabama. Could be a bit bad Dixie Alley day. By Friday, it all kind of spreads out, and we're seeing precipitation from the deep south all the way up through the Great Lakes here. Let's keep going. As we reach Saturday the 18th here, we see the east coast is really getting a lot of that activity. Sunday looks quiet, according to this model. Same story with Monday. Um, but by Tuesday, we have some interesting activity taking place across the plains down through some of the deeper south. Uh, we'll have to watch that very closely. We're approaching the end of what the normal European model uh, would basically be ending at. We do have some kind of Midwest and Ohio Valley activity taking place here, even some deeper south. So Arkansas up through Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio here, as well as some of West Virginia seems to have some activity uh, Wednesday into Friday or Wednesday into Thursday, better yet, 22nd into 23rd. That does reach the East Coast there by Thursday into Friday. Friday on the 24th, we do have more activity across this deeper south area ongoing. Let's keep it going, though, and we see that activity wants to stay in the same place. Here's Sunday the 26th, still seeing this deeper south Dixie Alley activity by the 26th on Sunday. Here's Sunday the 27th, and we get another bigger event here uh, for Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Missouri. So these same areas we've been indicating, seeing more and more of this activity. And then Monday into Tuesday, that's the 27th into the 28th, this could move into the southeast slash mid-atlantic area so again very far out but i think the big trend here is that a majority of that activity is in this area uh, or i would even say this area here which is exactly where we've indicated the shift of activity is going to be for over a week now so i just wanted to show that that is starting to get more and more validated by these models let's take a look here at the total precipitation and even though we don't get 360 hours here we can tell that a majority of our activity is in this area there is other very, very active areas, and it's almost everywhere east of the kind of plains area here. Take that to the northeast and take this to the southeast. Also take this to the mid-Atlantic, and we see a ton of activity from the central regions to the coast. Uh, but the highlight, the, the absolute most, is this deeper south area from east Texas all the way up to South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia. And everywhere in between, like Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, tons and tons of precipitation therefore activity snowfall still regressing a little bit we do see the cascades expecting a couple inches also sierra nevada and then the rockies a couple of inches up to a foot but this is definitely a lot less than what we've seen in recent model runs temperature pattern is a little bit cooler along the east and cloudy pretty nasty this week all the way through uh, as we approach the weekend but by sunday we see a big shift uh, we see a lot of warmth here in the central states especially but also the east and we see a big air mass of colder air out west. And watch how long this lasts. Sunday the 19th. And it just wants to really stay that way. We see that cold really recycle in and actually become a lot stronger here by Thursday the 23rd. Warmth still prevailing here in the central and eastern states by this late portion of next week. Friday, Saturday the 26th. All the way through Tuesday the 28th. We still have an overall warmer look here for the east. And cooler look out west. So again, cooler out west warmer in the east we could be looking at a little bit of more of a sustained warmer pattern here once we get through this week so definitely some things are looking up for you warm lovers let's take a look at the storm prediction center outlook real quickly and for day one we do have two general thunderstorm risk areas one out west for the rockies and plains one here for the midwest ohio valley northeast southeast south central all these areas so the lighter greens is our general thunderstorm risk area where we don't really expect severe weather. We expect general thunderstorms as the name implies. 
but severe weather is always possible and these outlooks could be slightly off so be sure to just pay attention if there is a thunderstorm in the area of just really really heed any watches warnings or advisories because they do happen now the darker green area is that level one marginal risk area where we do expect a little bit of some isolated severe weather to occur the yellow area here is your level two slight risk area where we do expect some more scattered about severe weather and then the orange area from Texas, Louisiana, Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and into the Florida Panhandle is where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to occur. That is that enhanced risk area, so it could get pretty bad in there. Let's go over the probabilities for day one. It's the more kind of uh, bad day here. This is all within 15 miles of a given location because we're going based off of percentages here. But the brown area is a 5% chance of hail within 25 miles, or it's 25 miles better yet, 25 miles of a given location. The yellow area is a 15% chance of hail within 25 miles of a given location. And then your red area there for Texas is a 30% chance of hail within 25 miles of a given location, which is pretty a uh, high chance for hail, obviously. This kind of hatched looking area there from Texas through a bit of Louisiana and Mississippi is where we have a 10% chance of two inch plus diameter hail within 25 miles of a given location. So significant size hail is expected to be of pretty high probability in there. Let's take a look at the wind outlook and it's the same thing. 5% in the brown, 15% in the yellow, 30% in the red, and then 74 plus mile per hour winds in that hatched area. That's a 10% chance of those 74 mile per hour winds plus in there. So pretty substantial. And here's that tornado outlook, a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there in the green. And then a 5% chance there in the brown for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida panhandle. So again, these percentages are obviously a little bit lower as tornadoes are a much rarer event than hail or damaging winds, obviously. Uh, so it's 2, 5, 10, 15, uh, I think, and so on. So that is how that goes. Now let's take a look at the day two outlook, a little less substantial. We do have a general thunderstorm risk again for the Rockies and the, the Northern Plains. And then one here for the East. Again, heat every watch morning advisory still. We do have a level one marginal risk here for the Southeast once more though. And then day three, we have a very interesting day. Uh, we have a general thunderstorm risk for the Sierra Nevada, one for the Plains and Midwest here, and then one for the Southeast. And then we have a marginal risk for a bit of Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas there. And then one here for North and South Carolina, and then one here for Central Florida. Very, very interesting. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.